Are folks pitching Ace 88? This. All right, folks, Pachini is 88, and we are back on Colonel Case on Facebook. So, uh, oops, accidentally went on to the next chapter. Now I have to live, yeah, we know that. We learned from several suspects that Lady Upton wants a difficult woman to please. Hey, someone that's here to see you. She says it's urgent. See, Trooper Ace, I've come as fast as I could. Received a telegram from Mr. Laster. It says, end picnic immediately. Dismantle tents, send guests home. Throw out leftovers. See, Trooper Ace, I thought I warned you before carrying out Mr. Alaster's instructions. Should I make him aware of your investigation? I'd rather not disclose the details of an ongoing case to Mr. Alaster. You'll have to comply with his instruction, Miss Melody. I only ask that you let Sea Trooper Ace search the grounds all one time before you clear you up. Ace, I'm ready. To the party tent we go. All right, newspaper is definitely one of them. Me to live on the vial says cyanide. Could be, this be the poison the killer used to murder Lady Upperton? The number at the bottom is barely visible, but I'm sure you'll decide for days. It's not a newspaper, I'm not sure why anyone would read it at a picnic. But you're right, it's an article about Lady Upperton. The headline says, Not in our town. We ought to uncover the article to know a little bit more. And that pocket mirror has the victim's initials engraved on it. We do well to collect those brown leaves scattered on the lid. Once more into the breach, A's, we must make headway before the picnic is over. Agreed. Almost like it's a snuff box or something. Hey, so that brought substance on Lady Georgina's pocket mirror perplexes me. It doesn't resemble any cosmetics or food served at the picnic. Smashing idea. The microscope shall reveal what's unseen. Yep, but let's just look through everything. Ah. Ace, this article featuring Lady Georgina speaks of the upcoming World Exhibition. Charlie and Dick are well excited about the exhibition. Many fabulous scientific inventions will be presented. But you're right, it appears that Lady Georgina disapproved of the event. The captain says Mayor's plans to host World Exhibition fiercely opposed by a member of the Accordion Elite. I see what you're thinking, Ace. This means Lady Upton was a thorn in the Mayor's side, and you never mentioned anything about it. Well, at the risk of becoming a thorn in the Mayor's side ourselves, we shall have to question him again. Yep, he was really nice the first time. Almost too nice. Nice. Peace, we now have a number to identify this vial of poison. Hopefully, Evie can trace it to the person who produced it. Okay, that'll be interesting.
Tobacco. I was right. Ace, the microscope revealed tobacco leaves on Lady Georgina's pocket mirror. Oh, dash. If I know how that helps. Oh, of course. Smart as a whip. Ace, only one of our suspects walks around with a smoking pipe. The rather peculiar Lord Walder Ridgewood. Lord Ridgewood fancies himself a detective. He had a theory that Lady Upperton was going to die, but what did he want with her ladyship's mirror? Quite right. Lord Ridgewood shall have the pleasure of us to assist the police again. I agree. Mayor Castletown, we apologize for troubling you again. I'm sure it's nothing, but we'd like to hear about your disagreement with Lady Upperton about the World Exhibition. Ah, senior trooper Ace, the press always exaggerates. The situation wasn't nearly as tense as they claimed. But it's true that the World Exhibition is extremely important to me. It would bring investment, publicity, and progress to Concordia. Everything I promised to my electorate. Her ladyship, however, was concerned that the exhibition would attract the wrong crowd to Concordia, and I did my best to appease her, but but she didn't listen. Given her status and connections, she was a serious threat to your ambitions. Yeah, between you and me, Senior Trooper Ace, her ladyship was a nightmare. I didn't get where I am today by giving in to shrieking harpies. Calling her a shrieking harpy, that's not always the nicest thing to say. Ah, detectives, I knew you'd be back, but not afraid to seek my expertise. Yeah, but we're seeking an explanation. How did you get a hold of Lady Georgina's mirror? Well, I was nothing untoward. I was merely attempting to establish her psychological profile by setting her habits and disposition. And what did the lady think of you if you were taking her personal belongings? Oh, she never knew. I plucked it from her pocket while reaching for some truffles. I then retreated to a corner, observing her from afar with a sherry cobbler in hand. Are you saying that you followed her ladyship and took her belongings, unbeknown to her? That's not only ill mannered but decidedly suspicious. Oh, Senior Trooper Ace, I hope you're not suspecting me of killing a lady. I evidently do not possess the mental disposition for murder. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Anyways, guys, I'm going to wait nine hours to grab some stars. I'll be right back. This will be Pitching ACD. Four o'clock. All right, folks, Pitching ACD, we are back. Let's finish this off. Yes, it occurred to me that if I keep a list of things, all the things I do, I shall never forget anything important again. The problem is, I don't quite remember where I put the list. Well, I can tell you one thing that was on it. Researching a number Ace found on a cyanide vial. The poison that killed Lady Upton. Oh, but of course. But of course. Ace, that's exactly what gave me the idea. You see, I've got the carriers to keep a list of their regular customers and the drugs they dispense. I can thus tell you that this bottle of cyanide was sold by a pharmacist in the Louisiana Fields to a Lady Highmore. Oh, dash my wig. Lady Highmore shall have to explain this. Oh my gosh. I can't remember. Kelly? I think it was Kelly who uh, mentioned to me that dash my wig is actually a reference to... Um, it's just a reference to like a phrase. It doesn't mean that she's actually wearing a wig, which is nice. Well, Senior Trooper Ace, I hear the picnic is ending. Not a minute too soon. Are you here to bid me farewell? Well, unfortunately not. We're here to ask you about this poison vial. Senior Trooper Ace found it in the picnic pad, and we know it's yours. Oh, well, I take a sniff of cyanide crystals from time to time. Dr. Jones prescribes them to me to calm my nerves. I might just need a sniff again if you keep insinuating. Well, Lady Heimer, you do not strike me as the fainting type. You claim you didn't use the poison on the victim. But could any of your guests have found the bottle? Well, very well, Saint Trooper Ace. I see you don't shilly shally. So I'll be frank with you. With all these people about, anyone could have found this bottle. We didn't have time to chaperone all the guests who came inside. I went to the garden to share a sherry cobbler with Mr. Swan's swaddle. That be all. This ghastly affair wanes my patience, Saint Trooper Ace. Rest assured, my lady, Saint Trooper Ace is very close to catching the culprit. Yes, yes, I am. Ace, we made some political or some puzzling discoveries. Mayor Castletown had a serious political tiff with Lady Upperton about the World Exhibition. Imagine the consequences if the mayor of Concordia were found guilty of murder, and all for an ambition to host the exhibition. Lord Ridgewood also has a personal obsession, playing detective, which he took too far when he followed around the victim and even stole from her. Then we have Lady Highmore, who whimpers and simpers when it suits, but she's not fooling us. We did find her poison at the crime scene. Sir Trevrace, are you finished? quite finished with the house? The maids are waiting to clean up. Wait, no, no, no. 
Hey, speaking of the killer wanting to delay Hamworth Saloon to dispose of the ring, they might have disposed of more. We gotta have another look before it's too late. Hey, thanks for giving us a heads up. Saloon tells me it's not her then. Like someone would have wanted us. Alright, what have we got here? A laundry basket, obviously. I see the cat, I see a shoe, I see a ship, I see a candle, and I see a cocaine mallet. The mates have already started to clean up. We better hurry or they'll erase the killer's trace. You reckon somebody could have been thrown in that laundry basket? We'll better look inside. Hey, that one's stuck. Sick. It's a croquet mallet, but why in thunder would it be indoors unless the killer tried to dispose of it? Sure, by Ace, there's some fiber stuck to the wood. We gotta collect a sample. Quick and smart. Ace, investigating is just like driving the Madmobile. When you turn a corner, step on the pedal. Killer shan't escape us now. What are you drifting? What are you drifting, Maddie? Old school drifting back in the day? Again, Tuesday morning, I will be uploading the Criminal Case uh, Pacific Bay app and just kind of show you guys what that's all about. So, hope you guys tune into that. Might even do a live stream of it in the future. We'll see. Hey, so let's expect those fire first to Viola. She'll give us something that ties this mallet to the killer. Poison was in. You found a cake in that basket? It's shaped like a frog. How peculiar. I wonder how it ended up under cleaning supplies. But you're right, a bite is clearly missing from the cake. And Dick said Lady Georgina's poison was something she ate. What if it was this cake? That would explain the missing bite and why the killer hid the remains here. You better warn Viola not to taste the cake when she examines it. Yeah, that wouldn't be good. Alright guys, so 15 hours it looks like. I will see you guys then. This has been Pitching Ace 88. Au revoir. Alright folks, Pitching Ace 88, we are back. Let's finish some of this stuff off. Well, hello, what is your verdict? Is this the cake that poisoned Lady Georgina? Behold, it is. Nothing better than the sweet taste of almonds to disguise cyanide. But there was another curious substance in the frosting. Small flakes of gold paint. Something you often find, often see on the casing of a brooch. This thin layer of gold paint is prone to shedding, especially if it comes in contact with solvents, like the poison. Ace, I can picture your killer poisoning the cake, then adjusting their brooch, and forgetting to wipe their hands in between. Viola, you are worth your weight in gold. Now the killer's gold brooch will single them out for the most illustrious crowd. Interesting. Viola, please tell me these fibers from the croquet mallet will score as the final point against the killer. Well, the fibers were red because they were soaked in blood, which I conclude was the victim's. Well, you're right, Ace. There was lots of blood on the crime scene. No doubt the victim coughed blood on the mallet, and the killer tried to wipe it off. Quite so. Unfortunately, this also made the fabric's color unrecognizable. But not the composition. Ace, beyond a doubt, you are looking at linen most often found in clothing accessories like a pocket square. Ah, should the killer shed some tears when you arrest them? At least they'll have a handkerchief handy. Uh, oh, so it's a guy. Interesting. Ace, hey, so you have all the evidence to bring Lady Upperton's killer to justice. Is it the Sherlock Holmes guy? I think it is. Oh, he's not wearing a brooch. It's him. It's Ernest Swan Swaddle. Of course, the guy who had a uh, you know, relationship with the victim. Ernest Swan Swaddle, you're under arrest for Lady Upperton's murder. Me? A murderer? There's no rhyme or no reason to that accusation, Sandra Braze. 
Oh, but there is. I found the cake with which you poisoned your old sweetheart. Poison a cake? What a beautiful metaphor, but poetry is just words, not reality, St. Brace. Yeah, there's nothing poetic about the cyanide you use for your wicked plants. Dissolve the gold on your brooch when you mix it in the cake. Well, why would I wish such a macabre end on Lady Georgina? I had not laid eyes on her for 20 years. Yeah, but you wrote some rather dark poetry about her today, and we gathered Lady Georgina wasn't the kindest of women. Did she hurt you too? You really had to hate her if poisoning her wasn't enough. You witnessed her agony as she coughed up blood, and you caressed her hair, perhaps at her remorse. Enough. I cannot bear it. I killed her, my muse, my tormentor. She humiliated me. She stole 20 years of my life, and then she humiliated me again. Believe me, I love Georgina with all my heart. Well, Mr. Swan Swaddle, how about you turn off the waterworks and tell us what happened? Well, Sir Trooper Brace, in our youth, a lady could not wed a poet without fame or riches. Georgina turned me down and said, Come back when you're a prince. Her parting words were etched into my heart. Twenty years went before my wealth and standing equaled hers, so I was finally worthy of her. But today at the picnic, she just laughed at me. Georgina said she should, she never waited for me. She simply never found an acceptable suitor. She said she'd rather kiss a frog than me. Oh, so you gave her a frog to, with, to kiss with poison inside. Suppose, suppose, suppose that's one form of poetic justice? Well, the inspiration only came to me when I found Lady Highmore's poison vial in the house. Only I had resisted the dark call of revenge. Well, it's too late for remorse, Mr. Swanswaddle. You're under arrest for the murder. Ernest Swanswaddle, it says here you killed Lady Georgina Upperton, who inspired volumes of your romantic poetry. Does this mean you'll stop writing now? Yes, Your Honor, my muse broke my heart and humiliated me, so I killed her. My inspiration is gone forever. Well, so is mine. I pray for retirement every day. <laughs> but despite my sympathies, we can't have you going around killing society, ladies, Mr. Swanswaddle. This court hereby sentences you to 15 years in prison. Oh, what does it matter? My spirit will never be free again, Your Honor. Oh, well, thank you. You brought Lady Upperton's killer to justice, which is commendable. But the dark mystery of Mr. Alas's deadly party still remains to be solved, and do not like unsolved mysteries, especially when they involve the mayor and the upper class. Ace, when you are ready, we shall have to discuss the way forward. We'll do that in the additional investigation. I'll see you guys there. This has been Pitching Ace 88. Over and out.